In today's video, you are gonna learn how to work off of an assistive device after a stroke. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara. I'm a neurologic physical therapist. And on this channel, our goal is to empower you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your overall mobility and your overall health. And all that said, probably one of the most common questions that I get asked when I see patients in person or one of the most common goals that people wanna work on is how to walk without an assistive device. So step one is figuring out are you someone who should be working on working weaning off of that assistive device? And the most important thing to know is that for most of you, when you start to work off of an assistive device, you are going to sacrifice quality of walking if you have had a stroke, especially if you've been using an assistive device for a really long time. That is how your brain kind of relearned how to walk after your stroke. And so many times you will compensate slightly when you take that support away. For some people, it doesn't matter. They just really want to walk without an assistive device but I think it's really important to lay that foundation first that that probably is gonna be a trade-off that you're gonna make. Number two is who is appropriate to start weaning off an assistive device. I think one is, is that you have not had a fall in the previous year. Two is, and this may seem obvious, but it is important, you can stand without holding on to anything. Not just with your feet wide, but you can also bring your feet together and stand without holding on to anything for 15 to 30 seconds. The other test that you wanna do is that you can step forward and back with both legs without holding on to a device or without losing your balance. Next test, the, uh, these are components of some bigger tests that we do to assess someone's fall risk. But the other one that I think is important is that when you're standing upright, you could extend one arm out, out in front of you and you could safely and easily reach forward five to 10 inches and come back without losing your balance. The other thing I think you should be able to do without losing your balance is be able to look over each shoulder. Again, you should be able to do all of these things standing still if you want to set yourself up for success of learning how to walk without an assistive device. Next, you should be able to stand with your feet staggered. So like this, you should be able to step forward and be able to hold that for about 30 seconds and be able to alternate doing toe taps onto minimum of a four to a six inch step, alternating taps like this without losing your balance. And last one, and get in a corner to test yourself for this one, you should be able to stand with your eyes closed, arms across your chest. You should be able to stand with your eyes closed for a minimum of 10 seconds without feeling like you're bouncing off the walls or without losing your balance, okay? If you can do all of that, then you are probably in a good place to start working off of an assistive device. But even at this point, remember, you are gonna be sacrificing quality, and you know my thoughts, hopefully most of you, because you, if you've been around for a while, that there is the potential to end up with kind of overuse injuries down the road if you're heavily, you know, just weight bearing on your strong leg. A lot of those things, aren't gonna go away and actually they're gonna get a little bit worse if you're walking without an assistive device. If your knee locks out, it's probably gonna lock out more frequently and even harder. If you keep your leg off to the side and you're stomping your strong leg down, that's probably gonna get a little bit worse. But not all hope is lost. When people come to me and that is their goal, my suggestion or recommendation is, is that when you are in a controlled environment, i.e. your home where you can kind of, you know where everything's at, you're very, it's very familiar, those would be the times if you really wanted to start exploring walking without an assistive device with the least amount of compensation, I say work on it in your home, but if you're going out into the community, not just for safety, but to maintain as much quality of movement as possible, still use your assistive device when you're in unfamiliar situations or if you know you're gonna be walking long distances and, and you can still maybe practice in your home walking shorter distances without that assistive device. 
So hopefully all of that made sense. But now let's go ahead and get into the actual progression that can be valuable if this is a goal of yours. So some of those tests that I went through should be a little bit of an indication of what I think are the most valuable exercises to focus on. And the first and foremost one is, is being able to stand with your feet side by side as in touching. And I, I think you should feel pretty comfortable doing that. Next would be, can you stand with your feet staggering? These are the exercises, the progression, right? So standing 30 seconds, if you can do that, add a little head movement. If you can do that, add a little arm movement. We're gonna get to walking, but this is so, so valuable. Remember, we're having to undo a little bit of all that support you've been placing on that assistive device for a long time. So this is super, super important. So that's kind of just like the general balance component of getting comfortable, challenging your balance or your center of mass a little bit without holding on to anything. Next would be the single leg standing. You have to be able to stand on one leg, right, without having that third leg over there to kind of balance you out. So where does that start? Starts with a heel lift. If you lock your knee out, the goal for this one would be to try and do it without locking your knee out. If you know that you normally uh, don't weight shift enough, meaning you keep your involved leg out to the side, if that is you, when you're doing this heel lift, you're gonna to wanna to overly focus or hyper focus on the weight shift component, relearning how to get your center of mass, your belly button, directly over your shoelaces on this foot. Remember, that single leg standing, you're going from two pillars to one pillar. You have to have that center of mass. You have to feel comfortable with it positioned over one foot. Okay, so you're gonna do that heel lift. Once you can do that, you're gonna do the forward step. And back. Shift, if the shift is your, what you have to focus on, and back. And I always recommend do this in a corner. It gives you boundaries, gives you a little bit of a safety net. Shift, if you know you lock your knee out, try and keep that knee soft, and step. Now, the other important part is when you step forward, now when you step back, you wanna step all the way back behind the foot. Okay, what most people do, and I worry for some of you that wanna work off an assistive device, is you're just gonna start doing kind of a walk like this, because it's just gonna feel a little bit safer. So when you have time, and you're not actually trying to walk somewhere, a great exercise to work on is forward, backward, stepping, stepping all the way past. See, this heel is beyond this toe. And when I step it back, this toe is beyond, beyond the heel. And then step forward and back. All this is essential. Remember, you have to lay a good foundation to set yourself up for success. And then here's the one that's gonna be very hard for a lot of you, but I do think that if you wanna set yourself up for success and you don't wanna get frustrated with walking, being able to stand with your legs crossed. It does two things. One is, for those of you that don't really like to get on the outside edge of your foot, which is a lot of you, uh, it kind of forces you to get into that position, so you're actually learning how to center your body over that foot. But the other thing is a, it's a stepping strategy so that when you lose your balance, you feel comfortable stepping across and stepping back. Most of you that have relied on an assistive device for a long time, you have been way off to this side because you've had this other leg over here, right? Your cane. You've had this other leg over here. So getting your body somewhat closer and even across is probably something you have not done in a really long time. So stepping across the front and back and trying to step behind and back. This would be the ultimate goal, but a lot of you are not there, so I would not start there, just a little bit. You're just kind of getting that foot behind. Have a stepping strategy 
is a way to restore your balance if you lose your balance. It's absolutely essential. Remember, a lot of you have gotten used to using that cane when you're losing your balance. You have to relearn how to use your body and use your legs to restore that balance. So super, super important, okay? Once you get all of that out of the way, now we can start putting it together into actual walking. And step one is going from a cane where your weight is on top of the walker to a walking stick, putting it up as high as you can. You want it as long as possible. The higher it is, the less likely you're going to be able to put your weight down through it. And it will be a totally different experience and an experience that you want to get used to before we go into walking like longer distances or going to a lesser assistive device is being able to walk and incorporating all the things that we've worked on up until this point into the walking pattern, stepping all the way past soft knee and centering that weight. Forward, and I always recommend walking backwards. And then what I like next is now not having anything to put weight down through but walking alongside of a wall. Once you get good at that, hovering your hand. It's still there, because remember, most of you, if you've used an assistive device for a long time, you're gonna fall in that direction. You're gonna feel more comfortable over on that side. It's there, but you're gonna try not to fall into the wall. All right, and then the next step, if this is your involved side, would be to walk with a wall on your weaker side. You still have some support, and what some people will do is they'll actually turn. It gives you a little bit of safety, but it's going to feel it's a totally different experience not to have anything on this side of your body and walk along the wall with it on this side. Walls are absolutely great safety nets, as opposed to furniture, which you never know if it's going to be stable enough to hold you up. And I know a lot of you like your furniture walking, but walls are a little bit different. You can't grab onto them uh, and they don't move. So that's what makes them so valuable. And then the next step would be to carry your assistive device. So you're walking with it. You're going to be tempted to put it down, but don't keep it up off the ground and try and walk. Now, safety is number one. So first and foremost, at the forefront of your mind should be don't hit the ground. Okay, that should be the most obvious. And you have to have that at the forefront of your mind for a long time before you start thinking about keeping the knee bent, centering my body weight at the very least for a long time, the forefront of your mind should be how do I stay vertical? If you can't, or you feel like you're tipping, or you feel like you're going to fall, go back to either a walking stick, or hovering at the wall, or walking and carrying it. Many, many times when I work with patients in person, we spend months, months, bouncing between all of these different tools. It's not like you just go right on to the next one. You could have good days, you could have bad days. You choose the right support or stability for that day to set yourself up for success. Any of the things that we just went over is going to be less support than putting your weight down through that cane or for some of you who you had a therapist who recommended a Hemi Walker, which is absolutely the worst device on the market, but for some of you, you're, even a Hemi Walker offers even more support. It is less than that, right? So keep all these tools in mind and keep them all as options as you spend the next several months weaning off of that assisted device. So I guess the most important take home message is be patient and don't think this is something that's gonna happen overnight, but a little bit of work each day and you can do it in a controlled environment, in a safe manner, you will get there. But that is it for this video. If you're new to this channel, you might not know this, but we do have PDF handouts that go along with these videos. This video does have a PDF handout 
those PDF handouts have pictures and descriptions of all of the exercises that I went through in this progression. To get access to that handout, you do have to be a gold or a bronze monthly member to learn more about our membership programs and to sign up. You can visit rehab-hq.com. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day. Thank you.